Zaram, Vet, and Shu, and you. Mr. Speaker, members of Congress, ministers, President Senate, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I could not be happier uh, to be here uh, in Dublin celebrating uh, our Independence Day and couldn't be happier to see so many of you who have turned out to join with us in celebrating uh, our National Day. If I am not able uh, to celebrate Independence Day uh, at my home, I cannot think of another place on this planet that I would rather be to celebrate the birthday, the 239th birthday of the United States than to be it here in Ireland with you and with my family. Our family ties between Ireland and the United States, our ideals, our culture, our history, and now, and now our commerce are so intertwined, so inextricably linked. Looking around this room today, seeing the representatives of such high-tech, globally focused, innovative companies, it is clear to me that the very best part of our commercial links, of our commercial history, are simply just beginning. And as President Obama said when he was here just a few years ago, the very best days for Ireland and for the United States are ahead of us. Across this country, from the no-tie zone uh, in the Docklands uh, to Limerick, to Castlebar, to Cork, the shared prosperity that has been created and nurtured in pharma, in high tech, uh, in medical devices, in agriculture, in engineering is simply evident. The blossoming, the creativity, the innovation that has overcome Ireland in these last few years is palpable and it is, um, it is absolutely marvelous to witness. And to see the partnership between Ireland and the United States in so many of these projects uh, brings great joy uh, to my heart. You are here in Ireland simply creating value and you're creating jobs. You are creating value and you're creating jobs through innovation. You are creating jobs and value through creativity. As I travel this beautiful island, I've learned of plans for even further uh, investment, for further uh, expansion, for deepening of, in, of, uh, res uh, of research and development. And this tremendous effort is doing nothing but totally solidifying and expanding the middle class uh, here in Ireland and stabilizing families and stabilizing communities. The pride that the Irish employees of so many of these American companies show is also uh, quite infectious and very evident. Uh, I have seen American companies show the way on being good corporate citizens uh, in their communities donating hours and hours and hours of volunteer time and resources to support local initiatives. I have heard from you about commitments to supporting education as well as expanding entrepreneurship, training, and mentorship to the next generation of Irish. As the U.S. Ambassador here, uh, I believe it is part of my job to make sure that I am constantly explaining uh, both here in Ireland uh, and in the United States what is happening here in Ireland and how the expansion of the economy and the creativity and the innovation here has spurred such wonderful results. The scale of our economic integration is truly on a level that makes Ireland a very, very key par port, part, excuse me, of America's economic strategy. As U.S. Ambassador to Ireland, it's also part of my job to make sure that this wonderful shared prosperity that we have now is passed on to the very next generation of Irish and Americans through things like entrepreneurship, again, innovation, 
through cultural links to make sure that the wonderful relationship that you've experienced and that I have experienced through the years is handed down to the next generation as each of our countries becomes more, more diverse and more globally focused. And turning just for a second, if I may, to, to um, a little bit of history. It turns out, uh, as you know, that on July the 2nd, uh, 1776, the Second Continental Congress, the predecessors uh, to the speaker and to the delegation he has brought here to Ireland, their very predecessors uh, declared uh, independence. Two days later, on the 4th of July, 1776, uh, in the Declaration of Independence was established the rationale and the reasons for independence. And those words which you've all heard but which should be repeated every so often are at the very beginning of the document in the, in the second paragraph, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are the, the rights to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Nine men from Ireland signed that Declaration of Independence on that 4th of July, 1776. Record keeping wasn't very clear to a brand new country, probably wasn't all that important, but it is estimated that between one third and two thirds of the American forces that fought in our Revolutionary War were from Ireland. The words that all men are created equal and that they are endowed with certain inalienable rights created a revolution. And we in our country for the last 239 years, we've defined those terms, we've redefined them, we've argued them, and we've even fought over them. But what is clear is that those words created a revolution and that revolution created a nation of dreamers and those dreams continue. Even though our democracy is noisy, uh, even though our democracy is messy, and even though our democracy has become increasingly expensive, we have a nation of dreamers. Dreamers so much that an African American could be elected as president of the United States. That the son of a saloon keeper in Southwest Ohio could become the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives and be third in line in succession to the President. That the grandson of two Irish immigrants, penniless, could come back here as the ambassador for their new country. We are a nation of dreamers. So, as President Kennedy once said, when he came here in June of 1963, no country has contributed more to the building of America than the sons and the daughters of Ireland. So Ireland and the Irish deserve to have a pride and a place at any celebration of America's National Day. The Irish are part of the DNA of America, both literally and figuratively. Ireland shaped the America that we know today. So on Independence Day 2015, here in Ireland, I am very happy to celebrate this day together with you, together. So God bless you all. God bless the United States. Gurumila Maliyev Guler.